and Lufkin. We can't afford to use as much hot mix as we would like, so we basically use a lot of microsurfacing. And what we basically use it for is to cover up slightly rutted uh, flexible pavement uh, and basically restore ride. Time to time we'll use it for roads we have that we've got somewhat of an issue of bleeding seal coats on. And then sometimes we use it just as a scratch course to fill up ruts in a single lane. We have an issue in Lufkin. We seal a lot of higher volume roads that a lot of districts probably don't seal. US 59 is an example. We've got 25 to 45,000 vehicles a day with a high percentage of trucks. And, and one of our standard operations is to seal roads like that. And there's many districts that won't uh, even attempt to seal a highway like that. We have found out that the big seal coat failures that we've had on 59, and we've had a couple of big failures, were where we were stacking seal coats and we've gotten away from stacking seal coats on US-59. If you're not gonna stack a seal coat, you don't have many options. And one of the options that we've used very well on a high volume road where we don't wanna stack seal coats is to put a layer of microsurfacing on top of that seal coat and use it as a wearing course for five to seven years. And, and this is true on any highway. You, you, you got a seal coat, We'll put a micro on top of that. Uh, we got a, a, a good rut-free riding surface on that highway for five to seven years, and then we'll come back in with another seal coat on top of it, and we'll seal that micro surfacing, and we're good for another five to seven years. I would say about half of what we do micro surfacing wise is generally along the US 59. When we get bleeding to the point where our skid values drop below a certain number, um, we've had good luck coming in with a microsurfacing and, and reducing or eliminating most of that bleeding and providing a good skid resistant wearing surface. Microsurfacing needs to be used where microsurfacing is designed to be used, and that's on a road with a good pavement structure. Unless the road's been rebuilt or I'm real familiar with the pavement structure, we do usually run the, the fall and weight deflectometer on that road to see if we have any soft spots or to see if it, it deflects more than, I think our pavement engineer, he likes it to deflect less than 30 mils in any particular spot on that roadway before he's comfortable with it, and, and I agree with that. We don't say it's an alternative to seal coat. Um, it's, a, it's another tool in the toolbox. It's more expensive than seal coat, but it's quite a bit less expensive than overlay. So we see it as being in between the, a seal coat and an overlay. And, and due to the fact that our funding has, has really reduced the last few years, that um, I can cover about twice as much area with a microsurface than I can with a thin overlay.